in the in the previous recordings, which you should listen to before this recording, I posted three recordings that helped you saturate about Kandinsky's Composition 4. And there were several overall themes that you could use. Um, for example, the semiotics of the symbolic color and their metonymic connotations and denotations. And if you think about it, I know you do that. You can look at a historical context in which the events of the time are um, expressed in the painting abstractly. Um, the psychology of color and its ability to communicate that's still used in product design today was something that Kandinsky set the stage for by developing a visual language that became, uh, that touched people's emotional intelligence. Now, at the beginning of the semester, when you looked at this artwork, if I said any of that to you, I don't think you'd know what to do with it. And when you reread the first things he wrote on the first day of his class, and then compare it to what you understood in the last three audios um, is what the, that progress is what should be in this paper. However, you choose to demonstrate the learning outcomes of this course. So, what I want to do here is after you have saturated about this painting with those previous audios, kind of fill in some bigger picture themes that you could use and talk about how our section on creativity and xenophilia can kind of be pulled together in a paper or whatever about this painting. One thing that I did not address was that Kandinsky was a synesthete. S-Y-N-E-T-H. Synesthete. Um, what it means is this. When we are born, we don't differentiate our senses. For example, if you see your mother and you smell a pickle and you taste a cracker, you can't tell the difference between sight and smell and taste, and so they're kind of fused at first until you're taught to differentiate your senses. Well, in synesthetes, certain senses never uh, detach, so for what I mean by that is that they may see a color and taste something in their mouth, or they might hear a musical note and see a color. They might look at color and hear a noise and feel it, something on the back of their neck. And so these people uh, tightly connect things like feelings and colors. And um, Yo-Yo Ma is a cellist, very famous, and he would tell one of his players, you know, the color, play the cello yellow. So the fact that Kandinsky was a synesthete and so I wanted you to use your senses to understand this painting. Um, so you might use your visual literacy and let the color affect your eyes and therefore your emotions, like music affects you. Kandinsky also himself would have heard music. <laughs> he painted this. This is like a musical score. Now, from what we learned with our multiple intelligences, you know that you have a musical intelligence, a kinesthetic intelligence, a visual intelligence, or a numerical intelligence. So if you are numerical intelligence, you might want to uh, look up the dates and the history of this painting. However, I want to point out as well, if you are a musician, and you can look at this painting and play a composition, whether it is uh, digitally created or acoustically, and you want to create a short audio for this, 
you can do that for this final. You just have to also submit a piece of a submission that says, here's the process that I use. Here's how I tied this musical score to Kandinsky and what I learned in order to do that. Likewise, Kandinsky as a painter is ex wants you to experience like what color feels like. If you wanted to do a painting uh, based on Kandinsky, and it would have to be totally abstract, non-figurative, only shapes and colors and lines that have meaning. For instance, diagonal uh, lines create movement. You know, you have to be able to interpret it. If you wanted to do a painting, you could do that, but you would submit a photograph of the painting and then um, a paper that talks about how you made the connections. If you are a kinesthetic person or have kinesthetic intelligence and you look at this painting and you think, you know, I could dance that. That's a composition of music. What if I found some music that represented Kandinsky's painting and danced to it? You could submit a TikTok if you want, but you still have to have that documentation. It's just that... Um, those are creating music in response to this, creating a painting in response to this, creating a dance in response to this, creating a poem, uh, rapping about it. Anything that kind of triggers your own creative response. Because Kandinsky uses his synesthesia, or his way of experiencing the world, to create this entirely new language he was part of the modernist avant-garde, and they're kind of dedicated to do that. Um, so if you wanted to use your preferred language to respond to his visual language and his musical language, you can do that. You just have to make it informed with a paper. Um, let's see. The other thing I wanted to say about that was that we talked about not only your own multiple intelligences, but we also talked about your creative styles, um, whether or not you were productive or innovative or inventive. Okay, Kandinsky has H creativity, high creativity, because he has this thunderbolt vision from out of the blue to paint this painting like nobody's ever seen before that's totally abstract and even he kind of didn't know what to do with it but knew he was on to something. When you get that kind of unique vision that totally changes how people see things, that's called H creativity. If, however, your uh, productive creativity you take something and tweak it, so you would take something from the previous three talks and keep tweaking it. You might look at the painting and interpret it using the right vocab. I'm talking about semiotics, and you keep tweaking the details. If you deal with ideas, I would suggest that you go through the previous three uh, lectures and just jot down the ideas. Um, I intentionally made those lectures so that you could take notes while you were uh, listening to them. And if you make a list of the ideas, you know, you can make a mind map of the ideas, see connections. If you do it on your computer, you could go back to the ideas and fill it in. So that's if you're innovative. If you're inventive and you need to put, you know, two things together, but they have to be kind of concrete. Um, you know, I would compare images for you because uh, you could compare, for example, Kandinsky's horse to Durer's horse, or you could compare a composition for to other paintings that, com that Kandinsky did. If you need to get your hands on something, it's better to, like, get your hands on different images or, um, you know, the other thing you could do if you like putting things together kinesthetically is that, um, okay, Kandinsky wants you to see 
the possibility of looking at things abstractly, like you're kind of redefining them. So three sharp red dots. You could take your cell phone and photograph something where you see three red dots. They can't be like three red stop signs. That's a representational object. You have to find like just three red dots. Or if you found sticks and you put sticks in the same order as part of the painting and photograph that. If you could abstract take abstract photographs with your cell phone and put them together to represent this painting and then tell me what photograph goes with what part of the painting that would be like if you like putting things together okay that would be inventive um I wanted to mention these different approaches because I think that sometimes you know you kind of freeze up at the end, what does Professor Delano want me to do? And we've talked about the importance of thinking outside the box. Um, Kandinsky is credited with being one of the first people uh, to think so far outside the box of painting is supposed to represent things. If I know what art looks like because art looks like what I know. And moving it into art is a completely new way of seeing. Um, I wanted to help you tie in what we had in our previous lectures with um, your own unique style. You could use some of that idea too in your paper. Because I am a kinesthetic learner, because I have musical intelligence, I chose to approach this uh, final paper this way. I want to encourage you to think outside the box if you want to and are comfortable to doing that. That's what can just do for you. If you want to do just a traditional paper, like you're not comfortable doing something creative, then I would suggest taking a look at that Bloom's Taxonomy. That's an entirely different concept of where you can go, so I'm going to make another recording about that if you're going to focus on that. Okay?